Want to know the heartbreaking story of Rob Parker and his friend's cave diving expedition gone wrong? Watch this video to uncover the truth behind the tragic accident that left the diving community in shock. Four Shark Blue Hole, also known as Kali Cavern, is a large ocean blue hole located inside the barrier reef about five kilometers northwest of Dolly Kay's South Andros. This cavern is one of the biggest in the Bahamas, with a coral-rimmed basin entrance that is about 33 feet deep. Its dimensions are 230 feet long, 66 feet wide, and up to 197 feet deep, with a narrow crack at the far end of the cavern leading to an extension of the rift that reaches a depth of between 164 and 344 feet. The base of the entrance zone is made up of sand and fine white silt, and when there is a strong tidal current, water from the reef mixes with the interior water. On August 17, 1997, a team of six divers, including Rob Parker, went to Four Shark Blue Hole to shoot a documentary film in honor of Rob, who had died mysteriously during a dive in the Red Sea four months earlier. Rob was an experienced diver who had spent a lot of time exploring blue holes and had previously explored various caves and sumps in Pena, Colorado. After two weeks of diving and filming, Rob decided to take one more dive to explore the unknown deep cavern beyond the restriction. Rob and Dan planned to explore a dangerous side passage that the filming crew would not allow them to dive due to safety concerns. To avoid being caught, they decided to do the dive before the crew joined them. The dive plan involved Rob and Dan diving with open circuit side mount rigs, each carrying one tank of Trimax in air. Two support divers remained in the main cavern while Rob and Dan descended to 220 feet on compressed air before continuing to 250 feet. To manage the narrow restriction at 164 feet, they left their mixed gas and oxygen cylinders at a depth of 30 feet for decompression. They began their dive around 8 p.m., starting with compressed air and making their way to a rift at the back of the cavern, 300 feet from the entrance and at a depth of about 120 feet. They brought along several cylinders of different gas mixes to use at varying depths and for decompression staging. Two additional mixed gas cylinders, EANX-36, were prepared for decompression during the exit from the cave. The entrance to the rift is a wide vertical crack that narrows as one dives deeper and no one knows the true depth of the cavern. A permanent guideline was used throughout their dive, passing through a 30-foot-long restriction and reaching about 175 feet. They switched to a Trimex cylinder at a depth of 220 feet, spent eight minutes diving, and tied off the line before exiting. During the ascent, Dan noticed something was wrong with Rob at a depth of 180 feet and caught him as he sank to 230 feet. Dan towed Rob back to the line and they both made it to safety, with Rob regaining consciousness. Rob and Dan were exploring a cave when they came across a narrow restriction with only two options to pass through it. Rob chose to swim above the line while Dan went below it with limited air supply left. Dan managed to pass through the narrow passage and reach the decompression tank they had placed earlier. He waited for Rob but did not see him emerge. He signaled for help and later found out that Rob's body was stuck in a tight vertical restriction. Unfortunately, they were unable to recover his body due to the dangerous location. Dan had to undergo several hours of decompression while contemplating what might have happened to his friend. The next day, they discovered Rob's body, but the tide prevented them from retrieving it. On August 19, two days after Rob's disappearance, a team of divers including Brian Kakuk, Dan Malone, Stephanie Schwabe, and Tom Illiff returned to the cave to recover Rob's body. While trying to move his body through an impassable passage, they had to remove his diving equipment because it made it hard to read his air tank's pressure gauge. However, when they went back to retrieve Rob's equipment, it was nowhere to be found. Although there was no autopsy performed on Rob's body, investigators believe that he suffered from nitrogen narcosis, a condition that caused disorientation, and may have led him to getting stuck in the rift. Despite being an experienced cave diver, Rob had no recent records of dives to the depths he reached on August 17. After his body was retrieved, it was buried, and his family and friends mourned his loss. We'd like to thank you for watching this video. 
If you enjoyed the video, please hit the like and subscribe buttons as well as the bell icon to be notified when we post another tragic cave incident.